good. So we are out on a learn to sail at the moment. Uh, my name's Nick, 45 Degree Sailing. This is Erin, the owner Hi. of this lovely boat, um, Nootka, Bavaria 46 Cruiser. And this is? Amanda. Amanda, she. Amanda's best friend. <laughs> <laughs> True, anyway. True that. True <laughs> that. Anyway, we've been doing learn to sail for the last however many months. Um, and we're out on an overnight, a couple of nights out. And we've just been doing picking up and mooring. So we're going to go through. We've just done a couple of exercises. And we're going to debrief that now while I've got some footage of what happened so that you can understand what these guys were going through the first couple of times they've done it. What did we just do? What, was it at the bow? Was it the stern? We picked it up at the bow. Picked yep. it up at the bow? Yep. Picked it up at the bow, came in uh, into the wind <laughs> against it. Which second time around. <laughs> I didn't get right the first time lessons learned. Why yeah. do we need to approach a mooring into the wind, directly into the wind? So that you don't get blown off it while they're trying to actually get it all. Effectively, it yes. Like we don't have control over the bow of the boat and the movement of the boat unless we are straight into the wind and that's where the bow thrust will be effective and we can stay stationary. Okay, yeah. so we need to approach into the wind. And also as the point we made is all of the other boats if they're on moorings around you should be effectively trailing with the wind so that right. makes sense to approach with the most space. Cool. Yeah. So we're approaching the wind and we're looking at setting up two bow lines this time. Last time we just did one mm. and um, this time we did Mahina's trick setting up both at once and Amanda tried that out. So mm. uh, how did that go? Ah, well it worked but it wasn't without a few little hiccups. <laughs> <laughs> true, true. Um, there's a lot of things for the ropes to get caught on yeah. up there. and uh, Especially and with it, the anchor and everything. Yeah, and, I, and what happened was we came up on it perfectly. Thank you. Thank you, mate. Um, but uh, the rope on the port side got twisted around the anchor chain and then locked in. So I had I had the ball up in the hand on the hook, two ropes in my hand, but I couldn't pull the ropes because one of them was stuck. And yeah. so, um, and it's heavy, isn't it? It was heavy. Yeah. I'm still kind of breathing uh, quite hard <laughs> from that little workout yeah. up there. Uh, but yeah, but I managed to um, obviously, you know, Aaron held the boat steady, and um, I managed to unhook and do everything, and it and cool. it worked eventually cool um yeah all right we'll go back to stage one so on the approach we mm -hmm. knew we had to approach from downwind um how did the approach go for you on the helm uh look it was okay um i was a little bit nervous at first because in order to come from the right approach we had to get quite close to the land yes. and i was a bit nervous about that i'm very nervous about that to be honest mm -hmm. um but as nick rightly pointed out if there is a mooring ball there for a boat of my size then I should be able to go around it. Yeah, like the ones that you went past in order to get there. Yeah, mm. okay, cool. So, yeah, they, they, and you make these assumptions, and you can also check this as a, on a pass-through yep. to be, you know, to see what other yachts are there, etc. Okay, cool. Yep. Um, and what then, about distance judging? Uh, distance judging was okay. I th I think it was, oh, well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Um, uh, we were further away than I thought I was, so I went into neutral... Probably a little earlier than I needed to. Which is fine, and we can always top up our speed. Yeah, yeah, and which I did. So then I had to go back into forward to make sure that mm -hmm. um, we had enough momentum to get there. And I think the second time judged it right pretty yeah. well. I think um, I think the, the point I wanted to point out there was like, you lose sight of the mooring. Depending on your mm. boat, the height of the bow, everything like this, there's a 46 foot. And we've got the dinghy strapped to the bow. You lose sight of the mooring two boat lengths out if you're heading directly to it, mm. which we did. And so then you're just listening to your person on the bow. So you've got to trust the person on the bow and their relative distance. If they say 20, it's 20. And then if they say 10, you've gone half the distance. All right. Um, but knowing that communication between the two is really important, mm, isn't yeah. it? Because you thought you should have been on the mooring and Amanda's saying we need to go further. Right, yeah. right, right, right. Yeah. Um, and then there was one occasion where I remember saying, are we close enough? You said <laughs> no. So I thought I needed to bow thrust to start it a little bit, but actually you were just like, no, if we just wait a minute, mm -hmm. we're going to be close enough. Yeah, yeah. yeah we were so uh, it didn't hurt anything. No, but no. I probably, you know, don't do anything unless you give an indication. Yeah, right. I mean, look, the thing was, I wasn't saying anything because everything was going so well. Uh, and that was our plan in the beginning. It's like, right, if you don't hear that you need to move the boat in a certain way, then yeah. everything's going okay and you assume it's okay. Yeah. Uh, and the one thing we did want to communicate is if you're worried about any lines next to the bow thruster, just to say, do not bow mm. thrust yeah. for whatever reason that is. Yeah. Otherwise, the skipper's job, the, the helms person's job is to keep that boat stationary as close to that mooring as possible. I think that worked out. I think when you made contact this time, we stopped the boat pretty well. Yeah, mm. yeah, it went well. Um, it was good. It was almost stopped anyway. So. All right, so the double lines at the bow, Amanda, how yes. did that go? <laughs> um, I think I would prefer to do a single line, okay. only just because I'm learning how to manage, you know, the hook and the weight of the buoy and 
and also I, I think if I set up the lines again myself I want to make sure that they don't get um, caught on things or they're not they're not set up incorrectly. So I'd done, a, I'd done a quick demonstration beforehand of how you'd set up two lines and, and she left it like that so she trusted me I, it, yeah. but you never trust someone else with your job <laughs> so I just run it around the anchor and say hey this is how it'll look but it was not out right? from the was, cleat yeah and so therefore it was it was foul yeah um, yep. but the good thing was is managing that because I was watching from the, on the yep. footage managing that you can take all the tension on your starboard line mm -hmm first and then you can deal with the other one and i saw mm. you, you you took it off from the cleat you got it sort of we're, we're all good yep, but there's yep. a lot of spaghetti at yep. the time isn't there oh yeah 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 there's a there, there was only it's a very small space up there with a with a lot going on and then you add two sets of ropes and boat hooks and stuff and then you've, you've kind of yep. you've yeah. got to you got to have the plan in your head yeah and i yeah. think if you've got a crew member um an extra crew member that can be there just to mm. take the hook mm. or yeah. hand off a line. That's really helpful. So you've got an extra person on the yeah. boat, you want to give them a job. That's, yeah. the, that's the job I, I tend to like to give them. Yeah. Well, um, well yeah. that's something else that we talked about was just the fact that until one of the lines is secure, mm. I need to stay on the helm. But once we have at least one line secure, you can I can walk forward. up yeah. and then help with yeah. managing lines. And the reality is if you've got one line secure, you can, you can take a coffee break. Yeah, and then come back to it. Mm. Effectively, that's shot the whole point. Arcia. Get one line on, have a shot at Akia, and then come back to it. Okay, cool. So, what would you do differently on the next run? Set up my lines correctly. Set up your lines yeah. correctly. Do it yourself. Trust mm. yourself instead of trusting me. Um, Good. Pick a mooring ball that wasn't quite as close to land. <laughs> well, that is what I would do. Oh, yeah, no, that's fine. It's fine. But I did give you that, that yeah. thing. Hey, that's the last one, and you got to deal with this. Yeah. Yeah. Or it's just the perfect. Remember the small yeah. bay we went into by Khla? That's a very tight space. Yeah. You'd have to do the same thing. Yeah. And there's not another mooring ball. Yeah. So, yeah, that's cool. But yeah, do, you definitely pick something within your scope and your means of what you're comfortable with. Yeah. Cool. I um, would. Um, understand that my distance is a little bit out or we'll just adjust for that next yeah. time so How know that i'm probably there, further yeah. away than i think i am and yeah. um so i probably wouldn't go into neutral quite as early okay cool um but also just not adjust unless my bow person mm. tells me to well, it's just establishing yeah, those communication. communication rules yeah. as well mm. like knowing that you know if nothing's been said everything's going well and yeah. then you know, and then just those simple commands, isn't it? Because it's quite hard to hear yeah. people from down here when you've got your head over there and there's noise going on yeah. and stuff like Yeah, simple that. and yeah. Um, consistent. Yeah. Mm. All right, so you practice the things that you say and mm. you use them the same Contact. every time. Mm. Contact when I hit the boy. Mm. Um, neutral, or, you know, stop. This is stop. Yep. Because often yeah, in yeah, the yeah. noise, the wind and everything, you can't hear it, um, mm. everything like that. And one of the big things, we haven't, have to deal this, haven't had to deal with this today because it's not that windy. But mm. if you get to that mooring ball and you get on on top of it and you get the hook in and then everything's getting too heavy this happens so often someone tries to hold it and they hold it or they break their boat pole because mm. they're trying to hold the weight of the boat mm. or they lose their boat hook all right you not you cannot but you should not be trying to hold the weight of the boat with your your own strength that is the the helms person's job now it doesn't mean they're going to get that right every time if they cannot if you cannot hold the strength you say i can't hold it you let go Mm. and we come around again you mm. set it up or we do the reverse into the wind option and you secure it to the stern and we, we wind it up later mm -hmm. yeah which we're going to practice this afternoon Woohoo! yay all right we've got a <laughs> sail to vis so um thank you very much for watching that i hope it was helpful there will be another comprehensive how to pick up a mooring official that i'll do with mahina in some ridiculously stupid conditions um at some point and we'll link that here but well done you too and i'm looking forward to seeing you get to vis for the first time. <laughs> yes. <laughs>